All right, we'll go ahead and start the Planning Commission meeting for July 13th. I hope everybody had a great 4th of July and welcome to this afternoon Planning Commission. So first is the adoption of the agenda. Commission members, have you looked at the agenda? We'll need a motion to adopt the agenda. There's been a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, all in favor say aye. Opposed no, ayes have it. Uh, we have adopted this agenda. Item C, which is the approval of the June 22nd, 2017 minutes have been given to you prior to the meeting uh, and we will need to adopt those minutes. Uh, are there any questions, additions, edits? We'll need a motion to adopt the minutes. So moved. There's been a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Ayes have it and those minutes have been adopted. Now we're on item D, which is the recognition of the council members. And I did see one council member here, uh, council member Nick Leonardo, would you like to? Okay, all right, councilman, thank you. And now, uh, any? I didn't see any other council members. I wanna make sure we don't miss anybody. I see a lot of formers, but not, not any. Um, now we're on item E, uh, items for deferral withdrawal, Bob. Yes, uh, starting with item number one, items for deferral, case 2016 SP 098-001. This is a request to rezone from specific plan to a new specific plan zoning district for properties at 910 and 912 North 2nd Street. A staff recommendation is to defer to the August 10th meeting. Next item on the deferral list is item number two, case 2017 SP-005-001. This is the delivery at 5th and Monroe SP to rezone from MUN to SP zoning. And the staff recommendation is to defer to the July 27th Planning Commission meeting. Next item is item three, case 2017 SP-058-001. This is a request to rezone from R10 and R15 to SP zoning at 1811 Kimbark Drive. And the staff recommendation is to defer to the August 10th Planning Commission meeting. And I'll note on item three that Commissioner Blackshear is recusing herself. Next item is item four, case 2015 S-165-001. This is a request for final plat approval to create one lot on property at Straightway Avenue, at 2044 Straightway Avenue. Staff recommendation is to defer indefinitely. Next items, item eight, case 2017Z-037PR-001. This is a request to rezone from CS and RS5 to RM20A, MULA, R6A, and RM9A for various properties uh, south of East Trinity Lane. Staff recommendation is to defer to the August 10th meeting. Next item is uh, item 9A, case uh, 2017 CP-004-001. Uh, this is the Neely's Bend Community Plan Amendment at 1133, 1145, and 1201 Neely's Bend Road. Staff recommendation is to defer to the August 10th meeting. Uh, the associated case is 9B, case uh, 2017 SP-049-001. This is a request to rezone from RS10 to SP zoning on uh, properties at 1133, 1145, and 1201 Neely's Bend Road. And the staff recommendation is to defer to the August 10th meeting. <coughs> and the associated, the third associated case is 9C, the HUD cancellation uh, request on the same properties at Neely's Bend Road. Staff recommendation is to defer to the August 10th meeting. Next item on the deferral list is item 10A, case 2017 CP-010-002. This is a request to amend the Green Hills Midtown Community Plan. And the staff recommendation is to defer to the July 27th Planning Commission meeting. Next item is the associated rezoning with that case is item 10B, case 2017 SP-045-001. This is a request to rezone from RM20 to SP uh, on property located at 2041 Overhill Drive. Staff recommendation is to defer to the July 27th commission meeting. 
Next item is item 15, case 2017 SP-035-001. This is a request to rezone from RS5 to SP zoning on property located along East Trinity, Trinity Lane to allow for 190 multifamily units. Staff recommendation is to defer to, to the July 27th Planning Commission meeting. Next item is item 18, case 2017 SP-056-001. This is a request to rezone from CS and RM2 to SP zoning at 3711 Dickerson Pike. Staff recommendation is to defer to the July 27th commission meeting. Next item is item 20, case 2017 SP-066-001. This is a request to rezone from RS5 to SP on various properties along Meridian Street and Edith Avenue and along Lishy Avenue. The staff recommendation is to defer to the July 27th commission meeting. Next item is item 21, case 2017 S-120-001. This is a request for final plat approval to create three lots at 621 39th Avenue North. Staff recommendation is to defer to the July 27th meeting. Next item is item 28, case 2017Z-075PR-001. This is a request to apply the contextual overlay district on vari to various properties along Knob Road. Staff recommendation is to defer to the August 10th meeting. And the last item on the deferral list is item 29, case 2017Z-079PR-001, uh, a request to rezone from R8 to RS7.5 zoning for properties along Cantrell Avenue, Cardin Avenue, and Leonard Avenue. Staff recommendation is to defer to the July 27th meeting. Those are all the items for deferral. Thank you, Bob. So, commissioners, let's go through these real close. Bob, make sure I'm right, so for the record. Uh, item one, item two, three, four, eight, nine A, nine B, nine C, 10 A, 10 B, 15, 18, 20, 21, 28, and 29. Is that correct? That is correct. All right, commissioners, you've heard the items for deferral withdrawal. Is there a motion? There's been a motion and a second. Any discussion? Any questions? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it, and those items will be deferred. Next is we're on item F, consent agenda. Item 26 has just been called. Mm -hmm. Oh, hold on one second. I think we have one more item for deferral. Can, okay, well, let's. You, you want me to get to that after the consent or? No, let's go ahead and, and con, um, consider that item. If that's okay with the commissioners, let's do that and then we'll. So, without objection, go ahead. 16. Okay, item 16. It's my understanding that the applicant would like to defer item 16, which is. Case number 2017 SP-053-001. This is the Twin Hills SP. This is a request to rezone from R20 to SP zoning on property located at 2133, 2135, 2135B, E Hill Drive, and uh, I guess East Hill Drive unnumbered and Twin Hills Drive unnumbered. And they would like to defer one meeting to July 27th? Yeah. Or? August 10th. Sorry, August 10th. All right, let's, so let's make sure the applicant is okay with deferring to August 10th, just to make sure, we'll put it on the record, that way we're not doing anything we're not supposed to. Yeah, are you okay with that? Yes, I'm here representing Domus Partners, the current owner and developer. We're fine with deferring to the okay. August 12th meeting. I understand there's some neighbors and we'll be outside if they'd like to initiate some additional conversation. Thank you, sir. Appreciate Thanks. it. All right, so you've heard to add um, item 16 to the deferral list. Is there, there's been a motion and a second. Any discussion on adding a, item 16 to the deferral list? Seeing none. Uh, well, it, um, <clears throat> 
the applicant just said that the reason that they wanted to defer it is that they understand that there's some community members that want to have a further conversation, and so they've, they're deferring it to allow the opportunity for that conversation to go on. That's my understanding. Is that and correct? they'll be out, out in the hallway if you all want to talk to them. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you can't. What I would suggest to y'all is to, to the, the applicant is uh, right there. He's raising his hand in the yeah. back. And if y'all would just step out and talk to him, that would be great. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so you've heard there's been a motion and second on item 16 to defer. Uh, any other discussion on that item? Seeing none, all in favor of deferring, say aye. aye. Opposed? Ayes have it, that item is deferred. And if y'all could step out, that would be great. Thank you. <laughs> now we're on the consent agenda. Okay, and before I get to the consent agenda, as information for our, our audience, if you are not satisfied with the decision made by the Planning Commission today, you may appeal the decision by petitioning for a writ of cert with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the, of the date of entry of the Planning Commission's decision to ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met. Please be advised that you should contact independent legal counsel. And as notice to the public, items on the consent agenda will be voted on at a single time. No individual public hearing will be held, nor will the Commission debate these items unless a member of the audience or the Commission requests that the item be removed from the consent agenda. So as I read the following items into the record, please raise your hand if you'd like one of these items removed from the consent agenda. Starting with item number five, case 2017-S-012-001. This is a request for final plat approval to create three lots on property located at 1227 Old Hickory Boulevard. This is the Binkley property subdivision. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions, including a variance to the side lot line requirement. Next item on the consent is item six, case 2017-S-082-001. This is a request for final plat approval to create three lots on property at 227 Marcia Avenue. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions. Next item is item seven, case 148-81P-001. This is a request to revise the preliminary plan for a planned unit development overlay district located at 201 Grizzard Avenue to reduce the number of mobile home units from 276 units to 155 mobile home units. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions. Next item is item 11, case 2017-Z-018-TX-001. This is a request to amend Chapter 17.37 of the Zoning Code, which is the, the Downtown Code, to update and clarify standards pertaining to subdistrict boundaries. Staff recommendation is to approve. Next item is Item 12, Case 2015-SP-005-005. This is a request to amend a specific plan on a portion of property located at Cane Ridge Road at, to amend the signage standards. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions. And I will note that Commissioner Blackshear is recusing herself on Item 12. Next item is Item 13. Case 2015 SP-068-003. This is a request to amend a specific plan on property located at Pettus Road uh, to permit the use of brick, stone, cement board, cultured stone, and or wood on 100% of the front facade and side facades of the, of the buildings. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions. Next item is item 14, case 2016 SP-039-004. This is a request to amend a specific plan on properties located at 1267 and 1271 Third Avenue South to permit a mixed use development. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions. Next item is item 17. 
case 2017 SP-054-001. This is a request to rezone from R6A to SP zoning on properties located at 530, 534, and 536 Southgate Avenue to permit up to 49 multifamily units. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions. Next item is item 22. Case 192-69P-002. This is a request to revise the preliminary plan and for final site plan approval for a, a PUD overlay district on property at 5716 Hickory Plaza to permit an addition to a warehouse. Staff recommendation is to approve with the conditions. Next item is item 23, case uh, number 38-87P-001. This is a request to cancel a PUD overlay district on property at 698 uh, Putnam Drive. Staff recommendation is to approve. Next item is item 24, case 2017-Z-052PR-001. This is a request to rezone from RS5 to MUNA zoning on properties located at 1233, 1310, and 1314 Lishy Avenue. Staff recommendation is to approve. And uh, next item is item 25, case 2017-Z-069PR-001. This is a request to rezone from R6 to RM20A uh, for pro on property located at 517 Dr. D.B. Todd Jr. Boulevard. Staff recommendation is to approve. And then under other business, uh, item 30 is to amend uh, an amendment to the rules and procedures of the Metropolitan Planning Commission. Staff recommendation is to approve. Item uh, 31 is a revision of the 2017 Planning Commission filing deadlines and meeting schedule, and staff recommendation is to approve. Number 32 is the employ employment contract for Lee Jones. Staff recommendation is to approve. And number 36 is to accept the director's report and approve the administrative items. All right, Bob. Let's, uh, did you mention 26? 26 and 27 were pulled from consent. 26 and 27. And then, okay. So. All right, commissioners, uh, so I believe this is right. Um, Bob, make sure I'm not making any mistakes here. Items for the consent agendas, uh, consent agenda. Item five, six, seven, 11, 12, 13, 14, 17, 22, 23, 24, 25, 30, 31, 32, and 36. And then we, yes, sir. Yes. It got pulled, so it will be heard. It will be heard. There'll be a presentation today on it, and it is no longer on the consent agenda. So the consent agenda, um, these are items that will be approved if we vote for it. And Council Lady Allen. I have a question about item 30, if I can just ask it now, or if we can. Well, let's get it in proper order um, and then in discussion. So we'll need a motion and a second to adopt the consent agenda. It's on the consent agenda. Can I ask my question? Oh, yeah, yeah, right now, after as we decide. the motion and dis yes. We're on discussion. Okay. Yes. Um, I just simply, that's the, that's the one where the executive director can make uh, decisions about sidewalk variances, and I just wondered if there's any recourse if the Planning Commission is interested in a particular case, if there's a mechanism to have it come before us instead. Is, and I, I don't, I gotta get the language here in front of me to remember exactly. The way this, I think the way it would work is that I would uh, that they would make the request to the department for the executive director to agree to a uh, to vary the sidewalk requirements, uh, and then y'all would have to well, and then they would be included in the director's report. But okay. I, but I do see your point, um, and one of the things that that we can do uh, is to actually make those letters so that they're only. Uh, they only become uh, applicable after adoption by the commission, if that's what the commission would choose to do. Okay. And then you'll have a chance to review them when the packet goes out. Um, Does Carrie that has her purse, her lips purse, so I'm sure she has something to say. The timelines are such that those are often heard by the BZA before the next planning commission meeting, is the only caveat I would give to that. So we're making a recommendation. We make a recommendation to the 
BZA. And the BZA makes the final determination. Uh, three of these came up in the last BZA meeting, and myself and Michael Briggs appeared in front of the, the BZA and uh, walk through uh, each one of those cases with them to talk about uh, the, uh, the council's uh, latest legislation in regards to sidewalk requirements and the priorities uh, that we do evaluations with and walk them through a new, uh, and I, I don't know that, have, have we submitted to the, Lucy, have we submitted to the commission uh, a copy of or is it in the packet anywhere, a copy of those recommendations? Um, we have, I want to, I think this is the one that causes the system to not function. Um, so, no, we, we have not in practice um, prepared a summary of our recommendations to the commission, but we could certainly do so. And why don't we do that at least for some period of time and see how the commission feels about that and submit to the commission uh, it, they, so to do this, it won't be on track with uh, the, the commission meetings. It'll run on a calendar that uh, that mirrors the BZA uh, meetings. And so when, um, when do we normally get those recommendations to the BZA? So typically we will send, if the BZA meeting is on a Thursday, we'll send the recommendations the Friday before. They tend to run on a bit of a tighter schedule. And so as, as Director Sloan says, it doesn't sync up very easily with us to be able to prepare draft recommendations f for your review and get them to the BZA on time. But um, I think what, as is suggested here, we could package the recommendations as part of the executive director's report. Um, once, once we have, but we would have already submitted them to the BZA. BZA would have already opined on those. Well, views I, and, and I think what might give it more meaning mm -hmm. uh, to, to your concerns, I think, is to send uh, all the commissioners copies of our recommendations on the Friday that we send them to the BZA. Mm -hmm. And then um, if something comes up that we're unaware of that y'all have concerns about, you can communicate uh, with my office and then we can appear in front of the BZA. They were very accommodating to meet with us the last time on all three and I think we had and y'all go back and watch that but I think we had a very constructive dialogue with the, the, the board uh, about our priorities and, and um, situations such as ADA requirements uh, uh, sidewalk requirements near our transit corridors and some places that we're really going to require uh, and um, not to recommend any sort of variance uh, for those locations or even in lieu fund in those locations because we think that's such a high priority as opposed to uh, a secondary street where there's steep topography and maybe some other issues like a, a line of trees that all might be taken out for a short run of sidewalk. Uh, that's the kind that we might give them a recommendation for in lieu instead of. Okay. Uh, but we'll send those to you on Friday. Great. So I think with that procedure in place, then I'd be, I'd, I'm happy to, for that to stay on consent. Okay. Thank you for the discussion. Thank you, Council Lady. Any, any other discussion? We'll make sure everybody's comfortable. All right. So, again, just so we all know after the discussion, so 5, 6, 7, 11, 12, 13, 14, 17, 22, 23, 24, 25, 30, 31, 32, and 36, which would mean that we would consider items 19, 26, and 27. Is that correct? After we adopt the consent? Yes, that's correct. All right. So, Commissioners, you've heard the consent. Uh, is there a motion to approve the consent? Okay. It's been a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it and the consent agenda is adopted. Thank you, Bob. And so we are on item number 19. Yeah, let's uh, make sure that if in the audience, if you're not here for one of these three items, which is 19, 26, or 27, the item has already been taken care of, okay? Okay. On item 19.
All right, so hold on one second though. Um, we're, all the screens are off on this side, so if we could get Craig or somebody. get those fixed momentarily y'all can look up here <laughs> go ahead the next item is item number 19 this is a zone change request to permit four residential units staff recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions This is a view of the existing site conditions showing the subject site, which is currently a vacant lot. Zoning for this site is R10. Land use policy for the site consists of conservation and T3 suburban neighborhood evolving policy areas. T3 suburban neighborhood evolving policy encourages development that is consistent with classic suburban character and building form with opportunities for improved pedestrian, bicycle, and vehicular connectivity. T3 suburban neighborhood evolving policy encourages creative thinking when developing in conservation policy areas, particularly in locations with steep slopes, rivers, and streams. The SP proposes two duplexes for two duplexes for a total of four residential units at this site. This site consists of 0.42 acres of vacant land that's currently zoned in the R10 zoning district. The SP permits a maximum height of 35 feet and includes architectural standards for window orientation, glazing, and entrances. EFIS, vinyl siding, and untreated wood are prohibited exterior building materials. Vehicular access will be limited to the unimproved right-of-way adjacent to the site. The unimproved right-of-way will be improved according to alley standards instead of public street standards due to its width and the lack of connectivity it contributes within the immediate area. Sidewalks five feet in width and a grass strip of four feet in width are required along site frontage on Alpine Avenue. Architectural standards included in this SP will ensure the four proposed residential units to be within two two-family duplex structures, provide a well-designed development along Alpine Avenue that is consistent in scale and massing with the surrounding residential development. This proposal will serve as a transitional area for the cluster of two-family residential development uses immediately west of the site and the single-family residential developments immediately east of the site. Sidewalk improvements along Alpine Avenue will enhance the pedestrian realm by contributing to the existing sidewalk network in the area. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions. The proposed SP is consistent with the T3 Suburban Neighborhood Evolving Policy of the Bordeaux Whites Creek Community Plan. Thank you. We'll open this item for public hearing. Is and the applicant in the room? The applicant will have. Ma'am, thank you for coming. You'll have 10 minutes. Uh, how are you doing? And you know the drill. You'll have, uh, you can save two minutes of the 10 for your rebuttal. Okay. Good to see you. Good afternoon. Uh, Tiffany K. Part, uh, 2940 Baby Ruth Lane, Unit 5, Antioch, Tennessee. Um, so this item was removed off the consent agenda, so I'm not gonna say too much about it because um, the staff has given a great analysis of it and is offered approval with conditions. Um, the property owners that I'm representing today grew up in this area, and so this is a development that is close to their heart, um, and so we wanted to do something that was consistent with the policy and consistent with what neighbors up in this area wanna see. Um, so the the reason it's been pulled off consent agenda today is because we had a really successful neighborhood meeting and the neighbors really wanted to express that they want to see more development like this in the area. This is some of the first uh, it, development in this area and so I think they just want to express that they want to see more development like this. Um, we've got four units that will be facing the street, parking behind, we're building the alley, so I think we've done everything that the T3 neighborhood evolving policy uh, calls for. We also are addressing the conservation policy with the architectural design that works with the slopes on the site, um, so we're meeting the policy in that way. So we thank you for your support and approval of this application. Thank, thank you. you. You have two minutes for a vote. Anyone wishing to speak in support? OK. 
Come on up. And if you all would um, make sure that you state your name and your address, and then you have two minutes. My name is Corey Jenkins. I live at 2715 Whites Creek Pike, uh, Nashville 37207. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Unfortunately, I think she took most of my thunder. Um, <laughs> Um, I'm here today because we had an incredibly successful community meeting. Um, unfortunately, in our community, many people have felt like their voices were unheard, like what they wanted didn't matter because they keep seeing other types of development come our way, affordable housing, low-income housing, workforce housing, and that's not something that the neighbors, the people in our community really want. What we really want is what this development is which is smart development that fits the community character, that raises the um, income level, the adjusted mean income for our area and our district. And it looks good. It makes you feel proud to say that you live in that area. Um, every single person that came to that meeting supported this development. We were proud that someone who grew up and lived here wanted to come back and invest here. Uh, we always want that. Um, and we wanted to have an opportunity just to say to you all as commissioners that if you see something like that for our district, like what they're doing, we want that. Anything else, low income housing, multi-level, low uh, affordable housing is not what we're interested in. We don't think that that's what's best for our community. Um, and we're gonna oppose that at every single turn. Thank you for your time. I hope that you will approve this and anything like this that you will continue to approve. And we're gonna try to continue to build up our ability and our will to come and speak what it is that we want for our community because we think that's the best way to engage. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in support? Seeing none, anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Seeing none, rebuttal if you want to or you don't have to. All right, we'll close this item for public hearing, and uh, why don't we start over here with Vice Chair Farr. You want to start first? I don't have any comments other than to thank the, the neighbors for coming out and reporting on a very successful community meeting, and it is great to hear people organizing and coming forward to speak what you want um, and contributing uh, constructively to the conversation about what's best for improving your community. So thank you, and I'll certainly support staff recommendation. Commissioner Tibbs. Well said, and I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions. Second. Oh, there's, okay, any, let's make sure any, anybody else wish to speak. I'm all right. Concerned. I'm just not sure if there's a question. Okay, Commissioner. I, I'm, I'm appreciative of the neighbors, and I'm not speaking against it. I'm just puzzled, and I'm just looking for a reflection on how changing the zoning from when we usually hear the opposite, right? We usually hear, hey, you can build four units on this block, property, but please don't because it'll encourage less, um, the range of incomes will be lower, which we like affordable housing. And if one house was on the, I, mean, I guess I'm, I'm struggling with how that argument that going from a one duplex with one house on a lot to going to two makes it more amenable to the neighborhood. But that's just a, it says that you can't answer that question. I'm just, that's my, it kind of blew my mind. So can I ask the? I, if I had to guess that Tiffany could probably Tiffany answer that question Tiffany can bring that up. You. you just clarify, just, because it's not usually the argument we usually hear is the other, yeah. the way, other way around. So They're usually like, no, don't put more houses on it. So this property is in the Bordeaux Whites Creek community. And um, Bordeaux historically has lacked the, the income needed to support retail and services that they very desperately want and need. So what they're looking for are housing that's gonna bring um, more professionals back to the area, um, higher, potentially higher incomes back to the area that would then make it attractive to retailers, restaurants, and other services that they need in that area. So that is why it's kind of thinking more so let's bring higher incomes, um, higher in housing to this area versus lower income um, housing to the area. And that I understand. I guess I'm, I'm, I'll look, I just struggle with why a higher income would want to go live in two units before, for four units versus two. That's what I was struggling with. But I haven't seen the design plans and so yeah, I'm all so for what's the Well, the, the units are about, uh, designed to be about 1,800 square feet, three bedrooms, two bathrooms. So they're full single family, you know, type of housing, but just in an attached form. Okay. 
All right. Uh, sir, I know you want to speak, but we closed the public hearing. I appreciate it. Um, and there's a question for the applicant. Um, so there's a proper motion uh, for approval. Uh, is there a second? Yes. There, I see a second. Um, any more discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. And it is adopted. We are on item number 26. Okay. <clears throat> item next item, yep. The next item on tonight's agenda is item 26. The request is to rezone from IWD to RM20A. Staff's recommendation is to approve. The properties are located on the south side of Cherokee Avenue, mid block between Ellington Parkway and Jones Avenue. Currently, a portion of the site is developed with two single-family dwellings while the remaining of the site is vacant. Surrounding land uses include a mixture of industrial uses and single-family residences to the south. Currently, the property is zoned industrial warehousing distribution, which is intended for a range of warehousing and distribution uses. The property is in the T4 urban mixed use neighborhood policy area, which is intended to serve, is intended to preserve, enhance, and create urban mixed use neighborhoods with a development pattern that contains a variety of housing, along with mixed use, commercial, industrial, and even light industrial development. T4 MU areas are served by high levels of connectivity with complete street networks, sidewalks, bikeways, and existing or planned mass transit. The proposed rezone is consistent with the policy as it provides for additional residential density in an area where moderate to high density development has been identified as appropriate. Staff's recommendation is approval of the request. This completes staff's presentation. However, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. We'll open this item for public hearing. And is the applicant in the room? We have 10 minutes. So my name is Johnny Hessen, I'm Bob representative. I'm at 4710 Law Cabin Road. Come on up. So wait, wait, you're at the, at the microphone. So you're representing the owner, sir? Uh, yes, sir. The applicant, okay. You'll have, so just, you'll have 10 minutes um, to present and then you can reserve two minutes of the 10 for your rebuttal, okay? Okay. Uh, we have a contract on this property to sell. Well, state your name again. Oh, I'm sorry. Your Johnny Hudson. I live at 4710 Log Cabin Road, 37216. We have a contract on this property belonging to my father-in-law, and he's passed away two years ago. And it's an abandoned property, I guess, more or less now. It's just sitting there, not being used. And uh, my mother-in-law has Alzheimer's, and uh, we're selling this property to take care of her. And that's really all I know about it, and we have a contract on it. And it's uh, contingent upon, you know, rezoning. Okay. And, and you represent the owner, the no. property owner. Okay. Well, you have two minutes uh, for your rebuttal. If there is a need for rebuttal, thank you very much. Right, thank you. Okay. Councilman, you want to go now or at the end of everything? Okay. Um, anyone here wish to speak in support of the project? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Come on up. And ma'am, you'll have two minutes, and please state your name and your address. Thank you. My name is Ashanti Davis. I live at 321 Edwin Street, um, Nashville, Tennessee, 37207. I don't know if my comments are ne ne necessarily like in opposition to it. I live about less than a mile, 0 0.7, seven tenths of a mile away from where this proposed development is. It's obviously an underdevelopment. The staff has. I have a feeling that based off of where it was on the agenda that it's likely to be approved today and I think that that's perfectly fine. What I want the commission to consider, there were other items on the agenda 8, 
10, excuse me, 8, 15, and 20, all of those are in the same neighborhood, and I live in that same neighborhood, and so I'm, in talking to my neighbors, what we are concerned with, I told them they didn't have to come today because the other items were deferred, but we, what we are concerned with is it's already about zoned for about 20 houses. By allowing 38, that doubles the capacity of what the land is typically zoned for to allow for housing. Behind that, 190 units are proposed, plus 38, plus 158, less than a mile away, plus the rezoning of my street. That's a lot in one area. And so I guess what I'm just asking sort of on the front end, and on the front end is that if the commission decides to approve it, which I'm not necessarily objecting to today, is that you consider it in conjunction with everything else that's going on in the neighborhood. And that like this sort of piece by piece of rezoning of large properties you know, a month from now when one that's half a mile away, you might necessarily remember that we've already approved 40 here and then 190 right behind it and 38 over here. And so I'm asking the commission, if you approve it today, I necessarily don't have an objection. I'm just asking you to be thinking about this area and what the development looks like and what that might do to the character that already exists. Because as someone who is, I'm 33 years old, I have lived there the enti my entire life with the exception of going to school. And it's a quiet neighborhood. And I understand that development's happening and that's gonna change. And so if it gets busier, that's okay, but we need to think about how much busier it's gonna get. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? Councilman? Come on up. Or do. Oh, um. Thank you. Hold on, Councilman, one second. Yeah, the, the applicant gets two minutes for rebuttal. And then I'll, and then I'll call you up, Councilman. I'm oh, sorry. No that was my fault. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's my first miss. <laughs> No oh, rebuttal. no rebuttal. Come on back up, Councilman. <laughs> I apologize. Doug, thanks. Yeah. It's my, it's I'm, I'm here to help. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good evening, um, commissioners. Thank you for volunteering your time. Thank you, planning staff members, for working the extra hours. This is a really interesting street. Um, this used to be a heavy industrial street. Um, my High High's neighbors meet every third Thursday of the month. And when it comes, I kind of consider this a down zoning because, you know, I've had my IWD and IWG areas. You know, I have fears of, you know, high levels of construction and waste transfer stations and other potential threats in these areas. So when we asked our neighbors what they would like to do, they're like, well, we're fine with density because at least with the traffic flow of the 38 or 40 homes, Number one, it's better than large trucks that go down there. And what I'm trying to do, because we're all working our way around, we all want more sidewalks, and sometimes the sidewalk ordinances are good, sometimes they give us complications. But the developer here is, is from East Nashville, um, lives in the neighborhood um, more, that's, that's purchasing the property you know, from these fine people behind me. Also, we're working out a condition and a community benefits agreement with the Highland Heights neighborhood for them to do the sidewalks. So if you know we've had difficulties, and Doug and Carrie and Bob, thank you for working with my family on the corner there that was trying to do the sidewalks, but the ordinance kind of mixed it up. I mean, it was one of those cases we wanted to help, but policy we wouldn't allow it. But if this developer is allowed to build those sidewalks down there for them, then we can get rid of some other issues. And we deferred some other items that my good neighbor, Ms. Davis, no relation to me, um, has referred to. We've also worked out some agreements with a person with the neighborhood to A, address our, affordable, our affordability issues through writing, but more importantly also taking up the slack of that sidewalk work that a lot of my constituents who are building homes in their neighborhood, like this gentleman who's gonna be doing this project, who has it under contract, they're willing to do that also. So please approve this, it's a high industrial area, so technically I consider this a down zoning, you know, from high-end high IWD, but also it's gonna help me um, solve the problem that we've been trying to solve for the Fifers at the end of that street also. So if they're responsible to do the sidewalks and put the money down, then my regular citizens don't have to do that. But we're also working out a deal with the people that bought my abandoned trailer park uh, with the 40 units on eight acres of abandoned trailer park we call it Murder Park. They're gonna be doing sidewalks along Edwin and fixing some of those issues. So 
also. So we're doing our best to, you know, we want the density, we want the affordability, and we're also allowing our neighbors to do, like there's a development up there, Sam McCullough, um, and he is a, he's the king of affordability advocate in my district, who on his, on his family's property on Edwin, um, they're doing 30 units, they did an SP, it took them a, over a year to get, get everything that the planners wanted, what the neighborhood wanted, the amount of trees. So we, our neighborhood's been working with you guys diligently. I know sometimes we agree to disagree, but we all love each other. And so please pass this so A, I can help the Fifers get their sidewalks done, and then we'll move on and we'll try to work out some of the same deals that we've done, you know, in order so my citizens don't have to bear the burden of that sidewalk. And plus, everything is right off of training lane, which is a major corridor, you know, which we all agree, transit friendly, highway access. So thank you for your time and thank everyone for their service. Thank you, Councilman. Mm -hmm. Seeing no one else wishing to speak, we'll declare the public hearing closed. And how about you, Council Lady? You wanna go first? Um, just to address the question that Ms. Davis brought up, when there are a number of different rezonings that are under the 100 and now 75 units that require a traffic impact study, or soon to be, does that traffic impact study take in recent rezonings as it looks at what the traffic count on the street is expected to be? Who answers that? Public Works? I, I'll look to Lucy and everybody else, but no, I, I, I don't know that there's a way that we're doing a cumulative. Or is there? Well, when there is a traffic study required, Public Works takes in the background traffic, and I know that they ask for recent rezonings to be included in those traffic studies. I mean, if there's not a traffic study required, then I think they're they're still aware of the traffic counts on the, the roads, and um, I, I think that they can take them case by case, and if they know that there's a need in a certain area for a traffic impact study, they can still require it even if it is under 75. So I, I think Public Works is pretty aware of each location and what the traffic is in those areas, and they have traffic counts available that they can look at uh, during the rezoning process to determine if they need to ask for more. Great, and they'll take into account recently rezoning they do. by asking yes, you. Okay, I think, that, I think that's important. I think that addresses some of her concern of, you know, will the infrastructure be improved to, to deal with all that? And it's important to, to know that those little 20 and 30 ones can get counted as they do the 190 one where they will have to do the traffic impact study. Um, so I, I think the councilman has done a, a great job, a very creative job on this one, it sounds like. Um, and I'm, I support him and the staff. Commissioner Sims. Um, my question has to do with the two single family dwellings that I actually drove by studying up. What I can envision are these two homes that are left with multi units on either side of them. And one of them is an empty lot, but the other actually does have a pretty nice house on it. Did anybody, what's happened to that homeowner? What? Well, I mean, with this rezoning, they'll be required to put, um, I think, buffer yards in around the perimeter of the site, but typically, I mean, this, the policy in this area calls for the whole street to sort of change over over time to a different zoning. So I would imagine that over time, those those could be rezoned. It's not guaranteed, but in the meantime, if this property develops, there's landscape buffer yards that would be required surrounding this this property. I just wanted to go on record for asking for that homeowner because. I've seen so many neighborhoods where there's a single home surrounded, living in a canyon. So, um, and the only other comment I have is, um, I do think it's important that we look at the aggregate. We're, we're moving so fast, and in this agenda alone, we had not just these 38 potential units, but over almost 200 units, and we all voted on it at the same time. So, just just a suggestion. Commissioner Haynes. No Commissioner Tibbs. No comment, but I'm just going to go on record as well, just to aggregate some kind of way. We do need to start looking at that. I remember we talked about that on Hobbs a long time ago, and we add after a while we were like, we're adding another one, and you know, and so um, just something for public works to, to start maybe considering as we look at these. But um, I think it's great, and the two single uh, units that like you, I was a little concerned about that, and you may have more to say about it, but um, that. Um, since you say that's kind of the plan for the whole street, and that seems like it's it's going to be an improvement, um, I I support it. Vice Chair, 
Um, so yeah, I was curious why there wasn't an effort to rezone the uh, the full the full block. Um, maybe that's for the councilmen. Or have you spoken with the property owners about the other property owners about trying to get those that property rezoned as well? Councilman Davis. Council. We have, it's a weird area. As you can know, the house is owned IWD. Right. And, you know, in the golden ages of, you know, back in the day when 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 Doug was a young codes guy, you know what I mean? He, I mean you're very familiar there, um, Mr. Director. Um, that's the area where, you know, you know, where, you know, a lot of record trucks were back there, record yards, and there was a, not a, I wouldn't call it paper mill. They did a lot of the heavy industrial printing. Also, that same street, there's a large roofing company that's right there, Collier Roofing, mm -hmm. and then they had a warehouse further down. So it's right off Trinity Lane. So it was a big industrial. And I don't know, that, you know, houses can live in be in industrial areas, you know, but a lot of that stuff now is storage yards, and you know, and so eventually it will transition, but. I, I, I'm not, if it's the house that you're, got, your folks were referring to, I think, I'm not sure, I, I think it's one thing that her relatives are wanting her to move, but, but she doesn't mind the noise. I'm not 100% sure, but right now I just know there's a busy, that's a real busy industrial street right now that's converting into, you know, something, you know, that's more manageable, even though it may seem like that's a lot of units, but compared to the traffic that's going in and out and the large tractor trailers back and back and forth, you know, as you can still see, there's still a business that has those, and then there's right. a record yard in the- No, um, I was so more thinking yeah. that if, if the whole area got rezoned, then you could bring the development closer to the street, which is kind of getting us more in line with, I think, the street pattern that we're looking for. Um, so I don't, you know, but that's, that's not really our purview here. It might just be something that we look at going forward is, um, and then I think also in, in um, reference to Ms. Davis's comments, I drove through there this morning earlier um, and was thinking the same thing, that we were about to approve or recommending approval of a lot of new units in that immediate area. Um, not just the traffic issue, but that is a lot of our remaining income affordable housing units. That's a lot of small, you know, true, affordable housing that we still have, that we don't need to rebuild. Yeah, and right. so up giving that much more attractive uh, zoning is going to make it much more attractive for redevelopment, and I fear that we are going to push out a significant chunk. Um, and, and I don't know what conditions we can have, but I would say that, you know, as we look at this whole project altogether, we should really think about what we're doing about, we're, we're contributing to some very significant gentrification. I mean, one thing about gentrification, when this is being done by the folks who live in my community, you know, I don't consider it gentrification. And then, when there's empty open land, like on the land on Edwin, where there's right. eight, one acre backyards and close to the corridor, but we agree, I agree 100% with you, and that is, that, is, that is why, you know, like with Village's big development, the 140 that we're still looking at, you know, we're, we're identifying the nonprofit to give two acres of that land to, to build the affordable housing, because we know that the 140 units, you know, majority of that is not gonna be in the affordable range. Right. And that's another reason why it was deferred, and also to make sure we have the infrastructure. But deeding those two acres to and Rusty, Rusty Lawrence's group or Eddie Latimer's group right there is you're they're forced to do the affordable housing. Right. Now, I, I mean, I, I, yes, I know that's not so, the item we're discussing tonight, but, but uh, is, I noticed that. And it is on my radar. Yeah, I, I think I was more concerned with the big, um, the big rezoning or the, that we were looking at or the. Which, but, which big one? Now, the trailer park is empty already, if we're looking at that. Yeah. One. Well, we can, we'll, we'll see those all in a couple of weeks, but I Thank just wanted Council. to put it on the radar that it was something mm. to consider. Mm. Mm. Mr. Hagner. Mr. Kyle. Uh, nothing to add. Mr. Budget. Regarding the aggregation of units being rezoned um, and the ability for us to take into consideration those recent rezonings, is there a way, just, I mean, I think we all have great memories, but sometimes we forget things that we voted on maybe 
three meetings ago, because, you know, six weeks ago. Um, is there a way for us to highlight that in the staff report? Like we have um, a line item for zone change, existing zoning, proposed zoning. Could yes, we could do that. Um, I, um, I would suggest that we should only do it when staff becomes aware, when staff notices uh, the number of rezonings in a particular area over say a six month period um, that we would bring. I wouldn't want to do, you know, Sure. So uh, that like type of mapping for every uh, development, but um, I understand what the desires of the commission and the concerns of both commission and, and the community. And so uh, in areas where we have a lot of rezoning uh, going on in, in a short period of time, we can include a map that shows it's pulled out a little bit further, uh, covers a larger area. And, and, and what we'll probably do is now just thinking out loud uh, is uh, look at um, the, the street network and how it funnels into uh, particular areas and include those areas, not just right. uh, indiscriminate you know, mile around it. We'll look at where that uh, development is coming in, where additional uh, housing is coming in, and then uh, look at how it's affecting the traffic pattern in the area and, and, and pull back. And we'll know because uh, we'll have the traffic studies that Public Works is asking for for the other additional traffic or, or uh, developments that are occurring in the area. I think that would be immensely helpful for the commission to make a sound decision. So, and you mentioned <coughs> maybe six months. So six months going back and then obviously any um, proposed plans that are currently before the commission would be included or could be included in that too. So look, for example, if those items had not been deferred today, we would have heard them all. Um, and maybe it would have been obvious to us all that they were in the same area, but maybe not. Yeah, I think we could do uh, ones that uh, where we've received applications and are pending. We could we could include those too. Sometimes I'll be frank with you uh, that because you're not seeing them yet means they're not fully baked, which means we don't really know exact numbers. Oftentimes that number's fluid through yeah. the process, uh, but we can give you the ones that uh, at least what the applicants are applying for at that yeah. time. And it doesn't have to. I understand sometimes when it's really preliminary, you don't really have a good idea if that's something that's actually going to come to fruition, but at least ones that are on our agenda. Well, and we'll know what the request is for, and we can at least uh, show you those numbers. Thank you. Good suggestions. Commissioner Diaz. Um, I agree with everything the commissioner said, so um, I would make a motion to support staff's recommendation. That's a proper motion, a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. It's a second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Those no, item 26 has been adopted. Now we're on item 27, last one. Good afternoon. Item number 27 is a zone change request to change zoning from RS5 to R6A. The property is highlighted in red. This is 1015 44th Avenue North, located on the west side of 44th Avenue North. Staff's recommendation is to approve. Current zoning is RS5. The policy is T4, Urban Neighborhood Evolving. This policy is intended to enhance urban residential neighborhoods that provide for more housing choices with improved pedestrian and vehicular connectivity. The proposal in front of you is roughly about 700 feet from a corridor going northbound and surrounded by a mixture of one and two family residential units. Also, this uh, property is located adjacent to transit. Transit does run along 44th Avenue North. Since the policy does support more housing choices and Given the location close to a corridor and along a transit line, staff is recommending approval. Thank you very much. We'll open this item for public hearing. Is the applicant in the room? Come on up. Thanks for coming down today. You'll have 10 minutes and you can save two of the 10 for a rebuttal. Okay. 
My name is Jeff Miller. I live at 147 Brookfield Avenue, 37205. I'm the owner of J. Miller Enterprises, which we bought the property under. Uh, when I bought the property, it was actually had a non-conforming use duplex on it. Um, went to the process with zoning to see if we could possibly build two units on it, and we couldn't. It had lost its status. Um, then met with zoning and the planning desk, and they thought it would be a good candidate. I kind of did too, just for the feel that it has around the nations. I've done some stuff on Kentucky, which is right around the corner from it, um, with the Centennial being right there and also south on 44th. Just the feel of the street right there felt like it would be a, a acceptable candidate. And met with the council person, and he um, he was felt comfortable after meeting with him, so so pursued it. Um, and then on the planning, so I'll just wait to hear what others have to say. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You'll have two minutes for rebuttal. Anyone wishing to speak in favor? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Please come up. Thanks for coming down. You'll have two minutes and state your name and your address. Yes, my name, my name is Eldridge Ronnie Simmons, 912 43rd Avenue North. Um, I live just east of the 45th Avenue. Uh, I'm a member of Tomorrow's Hope Neighborhood Association. Now, we had a meeting on Tuesday night, and the members asked me to come down and speak on their behalf, that they, are, they, they just approved it. They don't, they don't believe it, and they don't want it. And one of the neighbors that lived down the street from us, she was, her concerns was the runoff from the water. Um, this opened up the doors for our neighborhood, for the nations, because if you look at the nation, we're just, we're just east of the nations, uh, the, the single family lots over there have eventually just evolved. It's just totally taken over. Duplexes, triplexes, uh, multi units on one lot. So we, we actually are against it because of the fact we don't want to open up our area for that type of development. Because we basically have a lot of single family homes. The lots are like 150, 50 by 150 feet. So if we start now with this one project, there's another project coming down with us, a, a possibility of 100, well, 33 condos being built just up the street from this area. So we are concerned about what's gonna happen after we open up the door for this, this development. Just like you were saying, why would people in the neighborhood with single family homes want someone to come in and put two homes on one lot? Just as you made the statement earlier. Just like they said about the development in East Nashville. Nashville's growing, we know this, but what does it cost us as uh, affordable homes? I live in a home now, I own two pieces of property, but my house was affordable. If something comes into that area now, it's gonna be at least $300,000. And no one, we'll have to either move or no one else will be able to move into the community, except for the ones that can afford $300,000 homes. So we, that's why we disapprove it. Thank you, sir. Anyone else wishing to speak? Opposition? You have two minutes for rebuttal, sir. Yes, the, I mean, the purpose while I was here is it actually has historically had a duplex on it, so I don't think we're adding any more density than historically has been there. Um, as far as the runoff goes, I, I, I know it's, it's, it's on a hill. I mean, I've done development before, and generally, in this case particularly, it's, it's a non-salvageable, non-habitable duplex. It, it really has to be torn down. And, uh, you know, through permitting and Metro Water, we'll leave, I'm sure it'll be in much better position than it is now as far as water mitigation. Thanks. Seeing no other wishing to speak, we'll close this item for public hearing. And Commissioner Hagendeer, you want to go first? No? no? Oh, okay. Not really. Uh, I'm looking at the... Uh, map and it looks to me can we can we go to the zone map okay to see what the community character I mean I mean what the, what the, what the zoning around it is okay so we have RS5 seems to be consistently across the neighborhood correct there's RS5 um, to the north and to the east we have some IR zoning to the south as well as CS as you continue south on 44th Avenue north what is CS <laughs> commercial service I thought so but yep. okay Okay, so, but the size of the lot is consistent pretty much all the way down this road, 44, so it looks like most of the lots are about the same size. About the same size. You might have an outlier or two here and here, but generally speaking, that's the same size. Okay, and is the, is this, is, that's an alley. Okay, so behind the alley, is that an alley? This one does not have an alley, if you want okay. to take a look. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
but, but if you look at, say, 54, 55, 56, 57, all the other lots, they're also around the same size, and they're all still RS... RS5. Five. Five. Mm, that's correct. Okay. I'm going to reserve judgment and listen. I, I'm... Um, I'm going to listen. Commissioner Gobble. <clears throat> well, I, I mean, I... I see where the, I see where everybody's coming from on this. The staff, I certainly understand their their reason, and it's consistent with with the plan. Um, certainly, the neighborhood and keeping the rhythm of the street and the rhythm of the um, neighborhood is is important as well. I just don't know that we. I, I tend to think that we have to go along with the policy and the staff's recommendation. That's kind of where I am. Commissioner Blackshear. So the applicant, I'm guessing, is correct in that there was already a duplex on it, so you wouldn't be, like he said, you wouldn't be adding density to it, but by changing this zoning, I mean, to the neighbor's point, are, you, are we making it more likely for the houses down the street to be rezoned to something else, more well, density? I will address your first um, item you talked about. It was a duplex before. It has now become a uh, duplex no longer, according to the codes department. So they have made that designation that it is single family only. And then for every other reason that we look at, we would take a look um, as, as they come in individually upon the character of the neighborhood and the policy at that time and in, in just general how far it is away from transit mm -hmm. and the corridor. So we do look at each one individually. So as Leticia mentioned, I would just add on to that I think my mic is the culprit that sets all the mics, makes them unhappy. It's T4 neighborhood evolving. And so if you look at the intensity within the transect categories that we have in Nashville Next, T4 is beginning to skew to some of the more intense urban neighborhoods, and um, staff imagine this to be something of a transition. I mean, there is a bit of a patchwork to the south and to the west, and then of course you have the, the neighborhood maintenance to the east, and so I think from our perspective, given the evolving policy that it is T4, we thought the, in, the additional mixture of housing types was appropriate in this location. That is a specific policy goal. Um, within this within this transect. And the other thing I would mention is, um, again, that um, we would see this as something of a, of a transition. So. I mean, it's certainly a unique location because it is right next to commercial services and it is um, next to the industrial zoning. So, I mean, I'm, I'm hopeful that if we approve this, like you said, the next proposed rezoning that comes in this neighborhood, we're not going to rubber stamp it as to say more density because this is a, a unique situation. We do look at them um, individually. As Letitia mentioned, the primary factors that we look at, of course, are the policy. We look at how far away we are from a corridor. We look at um, adjacency to transit, and we look at the, um, the goals, I would say, for the housing types and those mixture of housing types. Those tend to be the factors that we try to focus on. That, and then, of course, um, whether or not there is existing infrastructure like an alley. So this is R6A, so even though there isn't an alley here, there are going to be design standards mm -hmm. here that aim to improve the pedestrian environment. And so again, we look at all of those together and weigh whether or not it meets policy. And in this, in this instance, we, our, our view is yes. But as you say, we look at each one of these individually. I mean, I'll say from looking at this particular um, piece of land, it, I mean, it does seem appropriate to approve the proposed rezoning, but I'm very um, concerned, and I, I mean, I acknowledge the neighbor's concern about opening the rest of the neighborhood up, and I know there's an evolving policy, but, I mean, people have neighborhoods that maybe they don't want to evolve overnight, um, so, and, and I'm heartened to hear that our policy is to look at everything in an individual perspective. So. I'd just like to add something. I just want to remind the commission that it's a small area of neighborhood evolving policy, so the majority of the neighborhood is maintenance. And so you're really looking at the few parcels uh, right, in, right in here 
And so that's really showing the transition from the industrial restrictive zoning to the neighborhood and trying to encourage a better transition. That's helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I, you know, I think that's worth pointing out to the, the public that uh, the policy really restricts how much this can go on in this neighborhood and it literally is just, well, this, the area that you see here, which seems to be uh, one side of 44th and uh, the, the small section on 45th and Clover, and that's it. Uh, that the rest of it is neighborhood maintenance. So, Commissioner Diaz. Thank you. That was really helpful, Anita, um, because I was starting to, you know, I had all these questions about, um, you know, like how could we rezone all those other small lots to RS, um, RS, or, R 6A, but um, I'm assuming that this policy was in place so that um, they could consolidate and create some something more dense there or something like that. But um, I mean, just with this new information or not in new information, but with seeing this map, I think I'm more comfortable with the the rezoning now. So um, I'm in support of it as well. Council lady. Thank you. I, I appreciate seeing the, um, the the differentiation between the neighborhood evolving and the neighborhood maintenance because I was going to ask why why is it neighborhood evolving? So it makes more sense for just that one little piece, and I, I hope it's it's clear to the neighbors that 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 lighter gray area that's called NM would not be given the same treatment or consideration. So this doesn't start the dominoes for everything. Um, so I was I was. Um, not very supportive when I was thinking that entire area was neighborhood evolving because if, if the neighbors want it to stay that way, it should be maintenance. And it looks like the vast majority of it is. One, one question I just want to clarify. Um, my remembrance, Beg, is that when something was a duplex, like within the past two years, you can reprove that status and, and still have it. So can you kind of walk through that process and how it applies here? That's a very good question. When I went and talked to the codes department regarding this, because it was a it was it was question if it was still duplex eligible, it it was determined by the, the codes administrator that it was not it was no longer duplex eligible. I don't have that exact time frame on my hands for you, but it was determined by them that it's no longer and it's single family residential only. And and Council, it would have had to have been used as a duplex when it was. It would have to have been uh, permitted as a duplex at the time that the zoning allowed it, and then the zoning change mm -hmm. uh, for it to be a legally non-conforming duplex. Gotcha. Uh, so okay. the fact that even even if they had used it as a duplex within the last two years, but uh, in fact never gained the permits necessary to make it a legal duplex, then they, okay. it wouldn't have mattered. That's that's helpful as well. So that, that avenue is not there, but this, this avenue is. Um, and it, I, I guess in general, we tend to support this like at, uh, at corners as opposed to mid-block. Um, so that was kind of one question I had was, I mean, it, it makes me a little nervous to take an RS zone and, and start punching R6s into it randomly. Um, and I have actually turned people down who've asked to do that in my district because the neighborhood worked really hard to get that that RS zoning. And as as the neighbor mentioned, you know, if you start making Swiss cheese out of it, you've, you've kind of got nothing at that point. Um, so can I have um, just a little more conversation about, again, is it just because it's neighborhood evolving that you're okay with a mid-block duplex? Well, well let, me, let me say, too, that uh, and uh, there was a discussion uh, going on that if you tried to do the same type of rezone for uh, the other side of 44th, then, and I'd ask Anita to tell me if she agreed with me, that it would probably take a policy change uh, to go along with that. Okay. As opposed to over here in the neighborhood evolving section. Okay, so that's the significant defining difference between those. Okay, that, that answers all my questions. Um, I think because it is, it is, this is neighborhood evolving where most of the neighbors live is neighborhood maintenance and that's a good protection for them. Um, I will support this particular one. Thank you for the answers. And just a clarification for the public, a policy change has to come to the planning commission. Um, right. So just keep that in mind. And the council. And council. Right. Yes, ma'am. No, no. no, not on the policy change. 
the policy change just here. comes here. That's uh, right. Okay. But if yeah. there's a another a, another community outreach uh, portion that goes along with that in conversation, and we take those very seriously and make sure that it's best because we got these policies through community conversation to begin with as we went through National Next process. Gotcha. So we don't take a policy change. Not that we take rezoning slightly, but right. it's it's another process that okay. would be added. And so the community has said they want the lighter gray area to stay RS, and we're not disturbing that. That's important. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Sims. First of all, thank you, Anita, for that explanation. That helped a lot. And then I want to thank you particularly for representing um, Tomorrow's Hope. It's a great neighborhood association. I think I agree with the uh, um, staff's recommendation, but I really encourage you to keep an eye on it as a true neighborhood advocate. And if the other things start changing, you know where to find us. Mr. Haynes. <laughs> Mr. Tibbs. I don't have anything new to add. I think the council, council labor, um, she actually hit the one. I, this definitely changed my mind though, because I wasn't going to be a, not for it because uh, it, you know, it's changing the context of what this uh, neighborhood is is really fighting for in a sense. But understanding the policy, um, I, I'm I can be supportive of it. Vice Chair. I don't have anything new to add either, but I am still struggling with the mid block change. I, it just looks strange to me. I mean, I understand the rationale for it. It's just, it's not sitting so well, but. Well, maybe we need someone else to make the motion. I'm not making <laughs> the motion. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to make the motion? Move approval of staff's recommendation. All right. There's been a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No, no. It's adopted. Um, we are now on to let's see here which items are we on historic just that uh, this is along with parks today we um, opened Fort Nashboro and um, it was uh, I encourage everyone listening and everyone here to please go by and visit it it is um, really turned out to be really nice so uh, that's all excellent very exciting it's been waiting a while for that yeah parks um, so I'm sure you guys are all aware about the Greer Stadium process that's been going on. So um, the board decided to um, schedule the meeting whenever it comes to the board to actually um, hold the public hearing so that people have, you know, time to come and express their feelings about it. So we don't know the schedule yet or anything like that. Um, but in the future, just wanted to make that public that we will hold the public hearing for that. Excellent. Uh, executive committee report. I don't think we have anything. Uh, and what's going on in the council? Passing budgets? <laughs> Passing budgets. Um, the uh, vice mayor has formed an ad hoc committee to um, continue to consider the short-term rental bill that has been pending for since this, uh, this body heard it. Uh, just to try to take into account the possible ramifications from the state level and also the possibility of having support of the web, web platforms in enforcing what we need, which is kind of a key piece of it. And also now that we've gotten um, recommendations from the consultant who um, met with many members of the stakeholders and the codes committee and has made some recommendations on how to, how to kind of revamp code so that they can be better equipped to, to do some of the enforcement. And now that we've got the, the software company um, working on kind of trolling, be, trolling the, the website and, and also um, serving as a one-stop shop phone, uh, phone number to call for, for complaints. So that group has 90 days to try to do our, our work. Um, it will be challenging um, and we probably will be meeting weekly. So maybe I'll let you know in two weeks where, we, where we're going. Thank you, Council Lady. Uh, I always save the best for last, I guess, Doug. <laughs> Maybe not. Well, the, the one thing that I, I, I wanted to make you all aware of, because um, we're, we're still dealing with a lot of issues, whether it's affordable housing or whether it's um, uh, short-term rentals, uh, but also Music Rose. We continue to, to try and, and give some meaning to uh, the Music Row overlay uh, that we've tried to do historic preservation over there in a, in a new way. Um, 
transferable development rights is something that we're starting to study. And uh, we have an RFP out that I think we're in the middle of. Uh, Bob, uh, the, have we already submitted our scoring on the RFP? We submitted that today. Okay. Um, so we've put an RFP out to ask for uh, an economic study done of what uh, transferable development rights uh, within the Music Row area, uh, how that might work. Um, how we don't want to create too much development rights to be transferred, otherwise they don't really hold any value. And we want to make sure that we create enough receiving sites that can use those uh, TDRs uh, so that there's a market for them. Uh, but in our early analysis, we figured out real quickly that that takes an economist, not a planner or a lawyer, to figure out what's the right balance. And so that's what the RFP uh, was for, uh, and we hope to enter into a contract real soon uh, to be able to have them on board to help us work that out because we think that's going to be a great tool. We hope it'll be a great tool uh, to add value to some of the historic properties in Music Row. And the way that that would work is if you had a historic property uh, and instead of developing on that historic property, you sell off the development rights that you would normally have and somewhere, let's say, in the downtown area needs those additional development rights uh, as a receiving site, then they could purchase them. Then the property owner in Music Row is still seeing the value and the increased value of their uh, property and at the same time we're getting the, the density in areas where we want it but the preservation where we want it as well Are and so to do that does the state allow yes uh, uh, yes i believe that we are allowed to do that uh I, I'm sure the lawyers will let me know real quickly. <laughs> we, well, let me say this: we already do it. Yeah, I mean, okay, it's so a so we are, well, we already have it in uh, the downtown area, and uh, we're already using it okay. uh, today, and Gulch okay. as well. Well, it, we can always, if we need to, and if there's a lot of questions, we can have a public workshop like we've done on low-income housing and some of the, you know, more intense and complex issues. So, and I know the staff will work with us to educate the commission on anything if it moves forward um, and educate us. So I appreciate that, Doug. Anything else, Mr. Director? I could go on for hours, but I suspect y'all are ready to go. Well, yes, and uh, thank you. And uh, we don't wanna have to cut you off. Um, <laughs> just um, also to remind you guys, um, still in summer vacation season, so make sure that um, if you're not gonna be at a commission meeting, make sure you let the staff know, Kelly know. I know she appreciates it. I'm in well, the Now that would be well. the time to tell you that I won't be at the next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. Me either. Anything else? Uh, seeing none, motion to adjourn. We're adjourned. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.